in. You are viewing the Five Star Ministry of New Zion Temple Church. Yes, located at 926 Morris Street in Hammond, Indiana, where our under shepherd is the powerful and anointed Bishop Brandon A. Jacob Sr. Hallelujah. Alongside him, of course, is his beautiful wife, the executive pastor, Pastor Vivian M. Jacobs. To our listening audience and to those in the building, all of our online presence, we are grateful that you decided to work up with us on tonight. On behalf of our pastor and the New Zion Temple Church, we welcome you to our Ignite service. Hallelujah. We will have prayer and scripture by Minister Rilan. Okay, we'll be reading from Psalm 46, 1 through 5. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof of shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early.
Jesus. Come on, everybody. Clap your hands if you're free tonight. Come on. Put them together all over the house. Come on. Come on. I don't see everybody clapping. If you're bound, that's all right. Don't clap. But this for the free people who be predestined. Come on. Do me all so long. together if you know that there's no condemnation if you're in Christ Jesus hallelujah hallelujah at this time we want to invite a very special guest up to minister with us on tonight hallelujah minister Jahari we're gonna ask him to come and he help us minister this song how many know that things will work out hallelujah things will work out as long as the Lord is in control I know that things will work out for me. Hallelujah. Receive Minister Jahari and the choir as we come. Turn out to be 
Lord, as long as long as you in control, that things will help, things will work out for for me. Help us sing it tonight. Yo. Say like Paul tonight. I, I am, am 
Everybody else can walk away. Everybody else can leave me. But Lord, as alone, long as you in control, I know things will work out for me.
praise all over this building like you're glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time look at your neighbor next to you and say neighbor I believe the Lord has a move of God in the room uh -uh, don't let him run put Pastor Romel right here come on Pastor I believe God come on look at trying to run has a move of God in the room for us tonight. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Oh, you ought to sound a little better than that. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Can we thank God for all of these pastors that are in the room with us tonight? Just give me a little bit more, Ryan. Amen. All the way from Baltimore, Maryland, Pastor Mike Hunt. We thank God. Pastor Andre Crittenden, we must have done something amazing <laughs> for him to be with us tonight. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Uh, for our Prophet Episcopal Vicar, Bishop. Uh, that's, that day is over. Bishop Cornelius Williams being with us on tonight. Thank God for Pastor Romel Williams. Amen. And thank God for Pastor Anderson tonight. Amen. God is good. And if there's more pastor preachers in the room, we honor them. Can we give a big clap for all of them tonight? Amen. Come on. Pastor uh, Hedgewood. Is, am I saying that right? Amen. Hedgewood. Come on up here, man. I ain't going to let you hide. All the preachers up here, come on with us. Amen. Receive our praise, oh God. Help me. Receive our praise. Oh, 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 Sanctify our hearts. Sanctify our hearts. Today. today. Receive. Receive our That's all it is. I want to hear the whole room help me. Reese, Reese. Oh, y'all sound good. Oh God. Oh God. I want everybody to sing it. Receive our praise. Receive our praise. Oh King. Oh King. Sanctify our hearts. Sanctify. Do y'all have it? Come on, try it. Everybody say it. Receive our praise. Oh God. Oh God. Receive our praise, oh King. Receive our praise. Oh King. Oh King. Sanctify our hearts. Sanctify our hearts. Today. This time, cut the music. Everybody say, receive. Receive our praise, oh God. Back up, son. I want to hear the people receive. Receive our praise, oh King. Come on, we're in worship together. Sanctify our hearts. Sanctify our hearts today. Give me everything. Let's go out. Out. Praise. Now, if you believe that, lift your hands all over this place and fill this room with worship. Come on. Let the room feel. We love you tonight, God. We are you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for what you get ready to do in this place. We thank you for a move of heaven. Lord, we love your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Yeah. Reese, Reese. Praise. Come on, everybody, help me say, Reese, my praise, Reese. Receive our praise. 
on church. I feel the presence of God. Oh, come on. Hey. Come on, everybody say, receive our prayer. and close your eyes and sing your own song to him. Come on. Come on. This is when worship comes in the room. Oh, we love you. 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 You're holy God. You're righteous God. You're God. Nobody like you. Father, we ask and pray that you have your way in this place. That you, oh God, would speak to us that you allow your word to come alive in our hearts. We pray, oh God, that you would move in this house like never before. We pray that you, oh God, would do a work in us that will shift us, oh God, to another dimension in you. Speak a word that would revelate us and illuminate us and encourage us to carry on and do what you have proposed for us. So now, God, I ask you what I ask you every time I stand to declare your word. Preach me, Jesus. Preach me, Yabo Shaddai, Yamande. Preach me, God, until breakthrough happen in this place. Preach me until deliverance break out. Preach me until minds are changed. Preach me until we leave here better than what we've come. Preach me until we know, God, that we didn't see Jacobs, but we've seen Jesus in this room. And we'll bless you for it. And we'll glorify you for it. And we'll count it done in Jesus Christ's name. All those in agreement said, Amen. Lord, the presence of God is here. Hallelujah. We're going to be in Job, the seventh chapter. Job, the seventh chapter. Amen. And I want to look at verses 17 through 21. Hey. I love you, Lord. I will always love you. I love you. Y'all got to help me sing it. Come on. I will love It's worship when we do it together. I love
in this room if you believe that open up your mouth and give him a shout give him a shout God, have your way tonight. Job chapter 7, verse 17 through 21. When you found it signified by saying Jesus. The Bible is like this. It says, what is man that thou shouldest magnify him and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him and that thou shouldest visit him every morning and try him every moment? How long? Wilt thou not depart from me, nor let me alone till I swallow down my spittle? I have sinned. What shall I do unto thee? O thou preserver of men, why hast thou set a mark against thee, so that I am burdened to myself? And why doest thou not pardon my transgression and take away mine iniquity? Now shall I sleep in the dust, and thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. I want to talk this uh, tonight from the subject, the trauma of being trusted by God. The trauma of being trusted by God. I see so many pastors. God bless you, pastor. I see you. Amen. So good to have so many in the room. I'm sure many of you all remember Brother Joe and Sister Catherine Jackson. They had 10 children, which in the eyes of the world, they tragically trained in music to be superstars. Many called Joe Jackson's rearing of the Jackson's children traumatic and abusive. But when Joe Jackson was asked why he was so hard on his children in preparation for stardom, he stated, they are my children. And I knew what was in them. I pushed them according to what I knew was in them. Yes, there were tears and hard days, but I knew what was 
in them and today it's paying off. Brothers and sisters, I believe that God safely targets us with trials and sees us through our pain because he knows what's in us. As we delve into this uh, book of Job, this poetic book, which is considered uh, one of the first books written in our Bible. As we look at this, not in uh, basically historical order, but in numerical order, Job being one of the first books penned. Uh, the book opens up introducing Job as a wealthy livestock owner and father of a large and faithful family. Job is noted uh, as an honest and devout man. Some, uh, some uh, versions of the Bible would tell you that he was perfect and upright. Others would tell you that he was mature in all of his doings. He was always taking care to ensure uh, the ritual purity of his family. Brothers and sisters, uh, though we hear about Job, we really don't hear about his wife until his wife is in chapter 2 asking him to curse his God and die. And you would know why she did it because according to Job chapter 1, Job lived in the land of Uz and worshiped God and was faithful to him. The Bible would teach us that he was a good man, careful uh, not to do anything that was evil. Job had seven sons and three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camel and 1,000 herd of cattle and 500 donkeys. He also had a large number of servants and was the richest man in the east. According to your Bible, my brothers and sisters, Job's sons used to take turns giving feast at his house. And because Job was afraid to defy the name of God, after the feast, Job would wake up in the morning and make ritual sacrifice just in case his sons or his daughters had sinned. And my brothers and sisters, one day while God was having a meeting in heaven, one day while Job was minding his own business, our Bible teaches us that while he was there, Satan shows up to the meeting. And the Bible says that God asked Satan, what have you been doing? Where are you going? And Job says, I ain't been doing nothing but walking to and fro in the earth seeking whom I may devour. While Job is having this conversation with God, God offers up the name of Job. Uh, my brothers and sisters, he even asked the question, did you notice my servant Job? Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, he asked, have you looked at him? God gives a grand resume of who Job is. He even replies of how perfect and mature this Job is. And Satan replies to God. He says, yes, I've seen him, but every time I try to touch him, Good God here. He says, you've got a hedge of protection around him. He says, every time I try to give him a hard time, he says, I can't seem to give him a hard time because you always seem to have a hedge of protection around Job. He said, but I tell you what, he says, if you remove that hedge and if you let me touch that Job, he says, I promise you that Job will curse you. Amen right to your face but God has so much trust God has so much faith in Job uh, that he says alright I tell you what I'll do he says uh, I'll let you go ahead and I'll let you touch Job he says I'll let you touch everything that he has just don't hurt him he says I'll let you touch him he says just don't hurt him we now find ourselves in the 13th verse of chapter 1 and the Bible says that one day when Job's children were having a feast at 
the home of their eldest brother. The Bible says that a messenger came running to Job and said to him, we were plowing the fields with oxen. And he said, and donkeys were in the nearby pasture. And suddenly the Sabians attacked and stole them all. They killed every one of your servants except me. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Before that servant can finish speaking, another servant came running and said, Oh, Job, lightning struck the sheep and the shepherds and killed them all. And I alone am the, am the only one who escaped to tell you what has happened. Before that one could end speaking, another servant came and said, Three bands of Chaldean raiders attacked us and took away the camels and killed all of your servants except me and I alone am the only one who can come tell you what has happened before that servant could end speaking another servant came and said your children we're having a feast at the home of your eldest son when a storm swept in from the desert and blew the house down and didn't just kill one of them but all of your children have been murdered and I alone am the only one who have shown up to tell you my brothers and sisters it is the response of Job that brings encouragement to me Job then stood up, tore off his clothes, shaved his head, threw himself face down on the ground. He said, and naked I came into this world. He said, and naked I shall return. He said, the Lord giveth. God, I feel like preaching in here tonight. And the Lord taketh away. That this, this is what got me. Blessed be the, oh God. I don't want to park here, but I would put this in your suit while I'm in your kitchen. Can you still bless God after you lost? everything can you still praise God after he's taken everything from you can you still say blessed be the name of God when you are left with nothing no money no family no way to turn and you got a crazy wife that got crazy stuff to say to you oh come on let me talk to this real church because half of you would have went crazy and left the church and charged God foolishly and said I ain't got time for this because we are raising an emotional church but not a faithful church but when you have a faithful relationship with God after God has left you with nothing can you still say naked I came into the world and naked shall I return the Lord give it the Lord take it away hallelujah bless it be the name of the Lord help me preach early and look at your name and say neighbor my praise is not predicated on what I have tell them my praise is predicated on who God is oh you better learn that early in life because if you only praise him according to what you possess you won't have many days to praise him if you only praise him according to how much money you got in the bank you won't have many days to praise him but a real praise is when you can praise him and says he'll take off the garment of heaviness and put on the garment of praise he'll take off the spirit of heaviness and put on the garment of praise you come in heavy but some way somehow you learn how to thank him hallelujah because he's God I can't thank you for what I lost but I can thank you that you still sit on the throne the Bible says in everything not for everything but he says in everything to give him thanks I can't thank him for everything but I can't thank him in it Lord bless his name here I wonder if I got a church here that says I can praise him while I'm in it though I can't praise him for what's going on we move into chapter 3 and God takes this time to brag on Job when we get to chapter 3, he's confident in the posture of Job. And he calls to Satan's attention the blamelessness and uprightness, if you will, of Job. Who has main, 
maintained his faithfulness to God through testing. Satan looks at God and says, oh, that's because you wouldn't let me touch his body. Anybody could praise you when their body is intact. Anybody can praise you until sickness has hit their body. Anybody can praise you, hallelujah, uh, uh, until their body gets sick and their doctor gives them a bad report. And he says, I tell you what, if you let me touch Job's body, I promise you he'll curse you. God says, Job, you can touch his body, but I won't let you kill him. You have, you have a range of what you can do. Oh, bless God. I, I shouted on that alone. I don't want to park there. But Satan can't do no more than God allows. I, uh, oh, bless his name. He got a limit, baby. He got a limit. Oh, that's some good news that he got a limit. He can't do no more than God will. He said, you can touch his body, but you better not kill him. And the Bible says that Job breaks out with sores and his wife urges him to end his misery and curse God by dying. But here is Job laying in a heap of rubbish and Job is in a place where he can barely move. He has scales all over his body and pus coming all out of his skin and he's bleeding all over the place. Uh, there's another text that talks about how he is uncomfortable. He cannot get any peace to even go to sleep at night because all over his body from the top of his head to the soles of his feet he is in pain he is in danger he is uncomfortable but yet he lays in his uncomfortable state and he still begins to bless God my brothers and sisters it is the book of Job that shows us the eternal problem of unmerited suffering undeserved trials and my brothers and sisters Job like us attempts to understand why God would engulf him with so much pain my brothers and sisters Job becomes a great example for us when we are trying to understand our struggle of suffering here Job was upright according to the testimony of God God, God said he was perfect. God said he was mature. God said he was an upright man. God said that Job had it going on. But even though God didn't have anything bad to say about Job, he still let him go through bad things. Uh, my brothers and sisters, you don't have to do anything wrong for wrong to happen to you. Mm. Oh, come on, let me help you. I, I, I know you, you probably can't say amen through here, but I would put this in your soup while, we're, while I'm in your kitchen in this world where they're promising you every day is going to be a great day. You're never going to have any pain. You're never going to have any sicknesses. And I know that we make these positive confessions, but let me help you, my brothers and sisters. Yes, life and death is in the power of the tongue, but your tongue can't overrule God plan and I need you to know that sometimes you will have to suffer oh bless his name here I know you don't like this kind of preaching I know this ain't popular but that's the problem that's why we can't go through nothing with joy because we can't understand why we're going through it but let me help you there may not be a reason right now as to why you're going through it just may be the plan of God that has you going through your head. No, you didn't ask for backstabbers, but you got them. No, you didn't ask for sickness, but you got it. No, you didn't ask to be broke, but you got it. No, you didn't ask for nobody not to like you, but they don't like you. Hallelujah. You're trying to figure out what I did wrong. Maybe God has put you there for a particular plan that he has for your life. And if you're going to sit here and mope around and not worship God and not come to church and not still be faithful you are giving Satan just what he said you was going to do but let me encourage some of y'all that's going through right now don't make the devil 
of a out of a truth speaker he's already a liar he was born a liar he's a liar right now and you gotta keep him a liar i don't care what kind of hell comes my way i'm still gonna lift up holy hands they may be hurting me but i'm gonna honor god i might be going through but i'm gonna honor god this may be a bad season but i'm gonna honor god you may not like me and i don't care but i'm still coming to church i'm not leaving my church because y'all don't like me i'm here because i like god here job is hallelujah a great example he doesn't lose some things. He loses everything. He doesn't lose a few things. Imagine being the richest man in your community one day. And in a moment, you have nothing. Imagine one day you're sitting at the table happy with your family. Thanking God for how good he's been to you. Thanking God for his favor and his grace. Getting up in the morning and making sacrifice for your children just in case they did something wrong. Imagine praying with them and being so happy and having this grand plan and got money put away for college and got enough money to go buy a car cash and your house is nice and your cars are nice and money in the bank and everything is good and you just left church on a Sunday morning and you shouted and you testified and you talked about how wonderful God was and you just knew your life was set because you put certain sacrifices in place to set up for your future and in a moment. Hallelujah! Everything you put in place is gone. Here is Job, my brothers and sisters, laying in a place and his friends have said, Job, you must not be all that they say you are. Truly, Job, you, God is not so unjust. That he just gonna pick on you. Oh God. Uh, I almost named this. He's picking on me. Y'all don't want to have church. I, I almost named it. He's picking on me because uh, uh, surely, surely God just won't pick on you and you've done nothing wrong. Surely God just won't pinpoint you out of everybody else and you've done nothing wrong. But if that's the case, then Job wouldn't ask the question that he asked in Job chapter 7 verse 20. Why has thou mocked me? Why are you against me? Why have you chosen me to pick on? Why am I going through this? And I want to park here for a little while because I know some folk told you you can't ask God why. Oh, but you'll get to a place in life. Uh, well you gotta ask God why can I help you you ain't been living long enough until you gotta ask God the question why 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 am I here why am I going through this why God what have I done wrong why why God oh come on can I tell you you're not you you don't have real faith until your faith get challenged uh, until you gotta question the reality of God because if God was God how could I be going through what I'm going through? I'm obedient. I pay my tithes. I forgive people. I treat people right. And surely I'm not supposed to be here. But you've marked me. You put your finger on me. You pinpointed me. You, you said this one. And I'm still trying to figure out why you marked me. What have I done so wrong that you will mark me out to be picked on? You will mark me out to be the one who scrutinized. You will mark me out to be the bad guy oh god look at the shame that he's going through where the people who thought he was so just now don't have such high thoughts of him not only have i lost everything i've also lost my reputation have you ever been not guilty but everybody thinks you are oh 
Oh, God, can I tell you, that's almost worse. That's almost worse than a sickness for you not to have done it. But everybody questioning, girl, you know he did. You know, you know, come on, you know he did. You know, you know, you, I believe it. I believe he did. I believe he was there. I believe she was there. I believe they said it. Oh, come on here. Oh, see, you can't say amen because you're a part of the believing crew. Hallelujah. As soon as they post it on, on social media, you believe it. You, you, you take on to it. You believe whatever you see. As long as it's negative about someone else we love negativity I have never seen it we're believers who's supposed to be on the same side we're supposed to be on the same team we're supposed to be holding everybody up we're supposed to be our brother's keeper but as soon as you hear something negative you can't wait to believe it and repost it and Job opens up chapter 7 Trying to answer his pesty negative friends who's questioning his sickness. But Job starts questioning his God. Job opens up by trying to reason with God and he, he, he gives an analogy of a soldier. He gives an analogy of a man who goes to work hard labor. And he says, Lord, even they get a break. But here I've been. No breaks. Months I've been sick. And in one day I lost it all. And he, he takes the first couple of verses in chapter 7. And he says, God, I'm only a mortal man. I'm not a God. I've done all I can to be right. Can I at least get a break? Can I, can I get a breather? No. Uh, or can I talk to a real church? I, I don't want to talk to you church and folk. I ain't got time for you church and folk. You church and folk make my skin crawl. Hallelujah to God. I, I want to talk to some real people where you've been there and you've asked God, can I get a break? Can I get a break? Can I just get a breather? Can I get one blessing to let me know you're with me? Can, come on. Can I get a prophecy of encouragement? Oh, come on here. Can somebody let me know that I'm doing the right thing? Job has this debate with God. He says, even soldiers get a break even 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 those who go to work get a time when they get off but you had me here you got to remember job is not suffering for a day months upon months upon months he's been laying on his back in rubbish and he's been bleeding out of his pores and the bible says he can't even get peace to sleep even in his sleep on his back he has holes and pus coming out of his back where if he lays on his back he's uncomfortable if he lays on his side he's uncomfortable if he lays on his belly he's uncomfortable oh god they put him in ashes they put him in heat hoping that the ashes and the heat will make him feel better but satan was so after him trying to get him to curse god that not even the ashes and the heat made him feel better it only made him feel worse it sounds like to me job had got a pretaste of hell before hell had ever got to him. Let me talk to a real church. What do you do when the God you worship gives you hell on earth? What do you do when the God you love makes hell stop by your house only because Satan is after your defiance of God? Oh, but I come back to tell somebody, you better have the testimony like Job, so he slay me. Oh, come on church. I'm looking for a real, so he slay me. Oh, come on. I'm not looking for you churchy people. I'm looking for you folks that says I should have quit, but I'm still here. I should have threw in the towel, but I'm still here. I should have lost my faith, but I'm still here. I should have quit a long time ago, but I'm going slimy. Yet will I. Hallelujah. Yet will I. And then you look at your neighbor next to you and ask him, do you still trust him? Mm. 
Oh, come on. Oh, come on. If that neighbor, if that neighbor can't get with you, that's all right. They're probably going through. Don't be mad at them. Find another neighbor and ask them, do you still trust them? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. If that one in front of you, up next to you, or back of you can't get with find somebody across the aisle and ask them. Tell them, do you still trust them? Because it's hard to trust somebody that keeps on bringing you pain. Do you still trust them? It's hard to trust somebody that keeps on hurting you. Do you still trust them? It's hard to trust somebody who you think is trying to kill you. That's what Job is saying. Though you're trying to kill me. Yet will I trust you. Job says, you've marked me. He says, you see me. You're looking at me. But you're not helping me. I'm praying to you. And you're not answering me. The prayer team. Hakadabusha. Is praying for me. But you're not helping me. The prophet called my name and said. It's going to be all right. But you're not helping me. Everybody I loved has betrayed me. You're not helping me. You see me, and I'm still crazy enough to trust. I propose, my brothers and sisters, that we are safe in the eyes of God, though it seems like God is leaving us in a painful tragedy. I tell you today, as long as God has his eyes on you, you're still safe. Brothers and sisters, but it's a painful thing to know that God is watching but not fixing. He's watching, but he's he's not he's not doing what I need him to do. And the question is, if God is watching, why do we feel like this is not going to end? Why do we feel uh, like this is unsafe? And I'm there to tell you, my brothers and sisters, uh, it is because we can't understand how you can be watching me where I am and love me so much and leave me where I am. Uh, uh, how can you watch me and, and, and leave me there? My brothers and sisters, uh, why should God, the watcher of men, continue to stare at Joe, the same God that has made the declaration that he uh, that watcheth over Israel neither slumbers nor does he sleep so you have restlessly watched me and not fixed me uh, it is it is a painful place and Job is here questioning he gets to the point where he's even saying well God if you're going to watch me in this for months why don't you just kill me I, I don't understand uh, why you are keeping me in the place uh, that you are keeping me in. My brothers and sisters there's one thing I've learned about trauma. Trauma can cause either doctrinal evolution or doctrinal revolution and my fear Pastor Romel is that hell has knocked on our door so much that instead of us evolving in God we have revolted oh God. That's what happened when hell knocks on the door. When God does something you don't like when God does something you don't understand when God does something you don't agree with for many of us especially in my generation we begin to build a revolution against the reality of God to make God unfair or to make God not real or to make God amen some bad thing we start changing doctrine we start coming up with our own stuff we start coming up with our own beliefs we start venturing off in the wrong direction amen and next thing you know we got a whole movement because you're hurt glory to God we got a whole movement because you don't like what God is doing we start revolting against God instead of growing in God sometimes 
sometimes my brothers and sisters even though you are questioning him you cannot give up on him you got to be patient until God begins to move this thing in the direction that you want him to move it in because at the end of the day you must understand when you look at this text God never gives Job an answer Job is questioning but God doesn't respond and my admonishment to you is when you are questioning God's seemingly abuse you cannot turn against him you gotta wait patiently until God begins to show you why you are in the position that you are in here goes some tough theology sometimes he will not answer the way you want him to oh come on here I know you don't like that I know you want me to preach something else I know you want me to tell you he'll always give you answers oh but come here church sometime he will not answer the way you want him to and sometimes he won't answer at all Jesus, don't help me preach, Pastor Romel. Uh, will you take this cup from me? Come on, will you take the cup? Will you take the cup? Will you take the cup, please? Will you take the This was Jesus' request. Will you take the cup? I got a cup. Will you take it? Will you take it? Will you take it? Will you take it? Finally, Jesus says, nevertheless, I die. not my will, but thine will be done. Oh, look at your neighbor and help them and say, neighbor, he may not answer but if you can be patient enough and faithful enough to just go through it I promise you you will understand it by and by that's how the old church taught me you may not get an answer today but by and by when the morning come oh come all the saints of God are gathered in one we'll tell the story how we overcome and we'll understand it oh come on here look at somebody and say neighbor I don't understand it now but bye he's watching he's he's watching Job I'm, I'm almost out of here Elder Garrick he's he's watching him he's He's watching him and Job can't understand why he's watching him. It kind of reminds me, I'm a father and I got, I got five children, four boys at the house. And uh, 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 they didn't put the trash bag in the trash can uh, the way they were supposed to. Uh, and the trash was falling over. And I yelled for Brandon Jr. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They hate it. They said, Daddy, why do you keep using us? Uh, for your sermons can't you find someone else uh, but they're good for the preaching and so uh, uh, the trash is running over and Baji uh, starts pulling the bag out of the trash can but as he's pulling the bag out of the trash can trash is falling on the floor uh, but greater than that trash is staying in the trash can so while the bag is coming up up. the trash is not coming up with it and what he didn't know that I knew is that that means that there's a hole at the bottom of the bag hallelujah and so he's pulling up the trash and there's a hole but he keeps pulling up the trash and I'm watching him and he can't understand while I'm watching him and he finally looks at me and says dad you're not going to help me I said no son hallelujah I'm going to sit here and I'm going to watch and now he's mad he's beat red you know he's a he's a he's a red bone glory to God and he's beat red his face is red and his tears are coming down his face and he's mad at daddy because daddy's sitting here and daddy is watching him try to get this trash out of this bag and he's sitting there and he's got to figure out how he's going to fix it he's got to figure out what is he going to do? And I just sit there. I offer no advice. I'm just sitting there. And he finally says, Daddy, what am I to do next? I said, you tell me. Hallelujah to God. Because I'm watching him. At the end of the day, I'm not hurting him. I'm maturing him. Oh, you don't want to have church with me. I have him 
in this place because I need him to learn what to do when daddy is not there to help you. Oh, but it's a good thing that I'm watching you. Because since I'm watching you, at least I can keep my eyes on you. I can watch you through it. I can watch you maneuver. I can watch you and watch you and watch you. And I'm going to watch you until you get to the point where I can't watch you no more until failure has overtaken you. But the only reason I got my eyes on you is because I want to make sure what you're going through doesn't overtake you. I just got to stay here and keep my eyes on you to make sure that you're going to make it through this all right. Job says, you're watching me, but you're not helping me. He says, Job, the reason I'm watching you is because I want to make sure Satan don't lose his mind and do what do to you what I told him he can't do. He can hurt you, but he cannot kill you. And I got my eyes on you because as long as I'm watching you, I'm going to make sure what you're going through ain't going to overtake you. Lord, who am I preaching to in here? Help me preach and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he will watch you while you suffer. But the only reason he's watching you is to be sure the pain you're in doesn't become the destruction of your life. Oh, I decimate you. Lift your hands and open your mouth and shout unto God and thank him that his eyes are still. Here Job is in a bad place, suffering, and still has to trust God that Job knows he's watching him, but he's not helping him. And what Job didn't know was that God was trusting Job with a testimony he made about him. Mm. I promise you, Christian, the next time we get up, we'll get out. He's trusting Job because he made a testimony of him. Before he got in it, Satan said, if I helped him, he wouldn't curse me. So I got to watch him suffer so I can make my testimony of him sure Satan I'll make the deal with you that I'll watch him but I won't touch him so you can know Job is not shallow because you told me the only reason he didn't curse me is because I keep covering him but if I don't trust nobody else I trust Job enough to stay in this and not curse me. I, I, I made a testimony. I, I got him in this because I made a testimony that he will not. No, he won't. He ain't going to leave me. No, he will not him. No, he won't. He won't leave me. And because I said it, I, I got to stay true to my word. And I got to watch Job suffer through this because I made that old slew for devil a promise. Uh, yeah. I'm not most sure that he wasn't going to curse me. Uh, my brothers and sisters, we feel unsafe in what we're going through because we don't see what God sees in us. I, uh, oh, bless his name here. Why would God mark you? God marks you because he sees in you what you can't see in yourself. Oh God, I hope I help you in here tonight. That is the crutch of what I want to get in you tonight. That may be the reason you are going through what you're going through is because God sees something in you that you don't see in yourself. How God has more faith in you than he has in the trial that you're going through. I need y'all to help me and please don't be churchy in this but I need you to almost be very prophetic in this moment with me right here. I 
And I need you to look your neighbor eyeball to eyeball until they feel uncomfortable. Look at them real good. Find one. Find one and look at them and say, neighbor, I know you're angry and I know you've been through some stuff, but tell them the reason God is letting you go through it is because he trusts that what he put in you is more than what's going on around you. And he just believes that even though life is hard, he just believes that you're getting ready to make it through what you're going. Lord, I feel glory coming in here. If that neighbor, hallelujah, if that neighbor don't understand, find you one more because I need you to encourage them. I need your neighbor to leave here with a breakthrough. I need your neighbor to leave here with deliverance and find him and look at him and say neighbor the reason you're going through what you're going through is because God knows that he put something in you he knows that you got greatness on the inside and tell him the only reason he's letting you go through this is because he trusts that what's in you is greater than the stuff going on around you oh don't make me make this Bible greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world I got to close here my brothers and sisters but what makes gold more precious and more expensive than any other metal hallelujah is not the fact amen that, that it's better or, or it's not the fact amen that is that is so so special but what makes gold amen better hallelujah than silver what makes gold better than bronze is that you can put gold in fire and fire won't destroy it fire will only make it better I don't know who I'm preaching to in here but what makes you so special is that God could put you in the fire and the fire won't destroy you the fire is only going to make you better Lord I feel that preach coming on me but before it comes on me all the way look at somebody and say neighbor you may be going through the fire but tell them by the time you come out of this tell them you're coming out better than what you've been through tell them when you come out of this you're going to be more anointed when you come out of this you're going to have more glory when you come out of this you're going to have more power when you come out of this you're going to have something on you that your enemies wish they had on them Lord I don't know who I'm preaching to but I dare somebody who's real proud of it I dare you take one step and just say neighbor I'm taking a step forward because God is getting ready to pull me out of this but when I come out of it I shall come forth and I shall be pure as gold if I'm talking right I dare you open your mouth and wave your hand and give God a shout because my suffering let me hear some more of that organ. It's getting ready to pay off for me. Oh, come on, neighbor. Have I told you yet that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed? I gotta close. I gotta close. I gotta close. But before I close tonight, the reason I got to go through this, the reason I got to have this pain, the reason I got to have this struggle is because God, he's getting ready to take the pain that I'm going through and he's going to allow it to work for my good if you know I'm right about it you ought to wave your hand you ought to open your mouth and I need you to shout because the pain that's in your life 
is not meant to destroy you, but the pain that's in your life is meant to pull glory out of you. If you know the glory is coming, I need you to open your mouth and praise him. I need to hear you shout. I need to hear you holler. I need to hear you scream. Because when I come out of this, I'm going to be wiser. When I come out of this, I'm going to be smarter. When I come out of this, I'm going to be better. Because all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and for those who are the called according to his purpose. It don't feel good to me, but it's working for my good. I don't like what it's doing to me, but it's working for my good. I don't like how this feels, but it's working for my good. And I did tell you tonight that when I come out of this, everything I lost, the Lord is going to do me like Job. And he is going to give me double. And the reason he's going to give me the double is because he knew he could put me through it. But I was coming out on the other side with the victory in my hand. Yes, yes. Oh God, tonight, will you help me preach? Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, because the Lord put you in it. Tell them this victory ain't just for you, but this victory is for you and God. Do you hear me tonight? Because God is going to be able to tell that devil, you put him through it, but he didn't curse me. You put him through it, but he didn't deny me. He went through it when he lost his children, but he still said thank you. He went through it when he lost his cattle, but he still said thank you. He went through it when he lost his home, but he still said thank you. He went through it when his body got sick, but he still said thank you. He went through it when his friends betrayed him. But he still said thank you. And all I want to know in this room tonight is can you suffer and still say thank you? Can you suffer and still give him glory? Can you suffer and still bless the name of the Lord? This word is for, but in 2023, your testimony is I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Please look down your row and say, hey, row, it might be a hard season, but praise him yonder Bohosha. Anyway, Lord, I feel the wind of heaven. I said, look down that row and say, you may lose some stuff, but praise him anyway. Look down Y'all ain't looking down your road. Don't be so evil. Don't be so mean. But look down that road and say, hey, road, we may be going through. But tell them, guess what? We all coming out with the victory. God gets the glory. 
glory but we get the victory God gets the glory but we get the victory God get the glory but we get the victory because when I come out I'm gonna tell him that the Lord brought me out and I didn't come out empty-handed but when I come out of this I'm taking back everything that the enemy stole from me if you're taking it back open your mouth wave your hand shout scream yell yeah. Take it back, take it back, take it back, take it back, take it back. I said, take it back. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he tried to take your jaw. Tell him, take it back. Look at that neighbor and say, neighbor, he tried to take your piece of Take it back. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, neighbor. He tried to take your family, take it back. Oh, come on, church. Where's my ghetto church? Where's my church that grew up in the hood? I need you to get hooded here and tell that slew foot, raggedy devil, you a lion wonder. Give it back. Give it back. Give it back. Cause nay, in all of these things, we are more. Through Christ Jesus, who love us. If I got some conquerors, I tell you, go to leaping. I tell you, go to screaming. I tell you, go to praising. Because the only reason I'm going through is because the Lord trusts them that I'm coming out. You're the one to handle church. I'm going through It's cause God Trust me That I'm coming out I'm coming out I'm coming out I'm coming out If you know You're coming out of this Don't come out By yourself But do me a favor And grab your neighbor Grab your neighbor Grab your neighbor by the hand Say, neighbor, come out with me and yank them. Tell him, come on, yank them. Come on, yank them. Yank them out of loaded bar. Yank them out of depression. Yank them out of the low place. Yank them out of pain. Yank them out of trauma. Yank them out of suicide. You cannot die. You gotta live and declare the works of God. Yank them. Yank them. Yank them. Yank them. Because of our maturity. Yes. 
There's some things we suffer because of how close we are to God. What blessed me about the text, Job said, you mocked me and then watched me and did nothing. And I can hear God saying, Job, I did nothing because I couldn't do nothing. Because I made a promise to Satan. You wouldn't quit me like everybody else. You wouldn't leave me like the rest who started going through and threw in the towel. And I know you thought that I left you. But I needed you to know, Job, I was with you the whole time. And the only reason you didn't die in it is because I was there. It's the trauma of me trusting you. We will suffer some things because he believes he can trust us with the pain of it. But the good news is you will not come out of this empty handed. He tells Peter, what man leaves his family and his friends and I don't reward them for leaving and trusting me with everything they have. I don't know who you're sitting next to, but look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you might suffer and you may suffer in pain uh, but look at him and tell him, but I declare unto you, God's got a reward for you. Oh, I need a real church in here. Well, God's going to blow your mind because of the greatness that he's getting ready to give you. I need you to get a real saint. Don't, don't get anybody, but I need you to connect with somebody next to you. And I need you to, and you know, it'll be good if you almost don't know them. Because if you don't know them, you can be a little vulnerable because you don't think they know your business. Connect with somebody quickly. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Look at them. Look at them real good. Don't be churchy. Don't be sedity. Connect with them and say, neighbor, you might be going through. Say, neighbor, it might be hard. Say, neighbor, it might be rough. But look at them and tell them when you come out of this, tell them you're coming out with strength. You're coming out with power. You're coming out with an anointing. My God, I feel a breakthrough in here. My God, I feel deliverance. My God, I feel a shift. I feel like somebody is getting ready to rocket towards a new place in God. God said, I called you here tonight because I'm getting ready to push you forward. I called you here tonight because I'm getting ready to take you to another level. I called you here tonight because I'm getting ready to shift you. If you won't be religious and if you will let me do it, I know you have to suffer. I know you have to cry. I know you had to go through it, but God says it's working out for you. 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 Oh God, I feel the presence of the Lord. Your destiny is calling you. Your new dimension is calling you. The glory is calling you. Fresh oil is calling you. Fresh power is calling you. If you believe in Zion, throw your head back with your neighbor. Come on, don't play with it, Chuck. I need you to shout out of your belly. Because some of you get ready to birth a new dimension. You get ready to birth a new level. You get ready to go to another place. A breakthrough is hitting you right now. Don't play with the church. Open your mouth and shout. I see it moving. God said progression. God said.
progression. God said progression. God said progression. God said progression. Yato reke. Ikota na maha. Brokota na maha. Brini di biosa. Yona maha. You came tonight. Because the pusher is with you. God says I'm pushing you. 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 The way to glory is on your life. You're my cutter. You are more than a psalmist. You are more than a singer. The preacher is in you. The prophet is in you. The seer is in you. He said, and I'm breaking tradition. 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 Don't be bound by tradition. God said, no. I'm pulling you out because I'm pulling you up. I'm pulling you out. I'm pulling you up. Your doctor won't change, but your traditions will. How? 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 I need a church. I need you to holler like you got to haul it out. That is. Ooh, I just felt heaven. Ho, 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 ho. New glory. I need the Holy Ghost folk. I don't need everybody, but I need those crazy in the Holy Ghost. Those who got power in the Holy Ghost. I need you to open your and I need you to shout. Because there's a breakthrough in here. There's a breakthrough in here. I double shout. I feel heaven. You double shout. I feel heaven. You're my shout. I don't know who you are, but there's about a hundred of you. You need to start walking. Because you're about to walk in a new place. Get out your seat and go walking. Start walking, church. Start walking, church. Start walking, church. Start walking, church. Start walking. Start walking. Walk in a new place. Walk in new glory. Walk in new power. Walk in new strength. Hanamosha. He said, I'm giving you direction. I'm giving you direction. He says, I know you need it in this season. And he said, daughter, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. I need my prayer warriors. Come on, say to God. Breakthrough is in this place. He called to my heart. It's going to make sense. It's going to make sense. It's going to make sense. It's got to man seke, brikata na na mando, yine di 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 osha, ho, 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 shada, woo, shaba ba ho, ilaba, reach under and get her in the belly. I need you to touch her belly, cause God is stirring her. Hey, ba na 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 na, woo, hey, 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 woo. Girl, you leaving here with a breakthrough. I said you leaving here with a breakthrough. God said the breaker is here. Show my mind up my own. The break. I don't need the music. I need the voices. I just heard the Lord say that God's getting ready to break this woman through. And God said, I'm getting ready to break you through a new glory with me. And I'm getting ready to make your, your direction and your plan and your, your, the way you're going plain and safe and clear. He said, when you leave in the night, it's going to be clearer to you. I just need some folk who ain't jealous. I don't need no music here, Christian. I need the trumpets of the people. I need somebody who ain't jealous to open your mouth and shout like it was you. Ha! Hey, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. Lift your hands. You are not your father. You will not be your father. God says, I have called you to be different. 
I have called you to bring a fresh thing to that place. I have called you to be like a fire. And I have called you to burst through. And he says, don't be afraid to do what I told you. He says, it's going to make some folk mad. But God says, it ain't about the people. He said, don't be worried about the people. God said, I am with you. God says, my power is upon you. And God said, yes, I called you. Yes, you're the one for the job. Yes, you're the one I put my hand on. Yes, my glory is with you. Yes, my anointing is on you. And I stir you. And I stir you. And I stir you. I stir the pre preacher in you. I stir the prophet in you I stir the glory in you oh come on church I need your voices I need somebody to open your mouth and shout like you believe that God is releasing a new wave of glory and a new wave of anointing go to the one Christian let's go help where you at church where you at church where you at church? My God, I feel the power. My God, I feel the power. My God. Ha, 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 ha. I need somebody who believes God to open your mouth and shout. to me before tonight and she said Lord she said Bishop the Lord told me before ignite tonight hallelujah she said that heaven hallelujah was getting ready to touch everybody that come in that building tonight she said the Lord said every person that walk in that building she said they're gonna leave out of here with another weight of heaven and glory on them she said Bishop I can't wait to see what God's getting ready to do tonight Look at somebody next to you and say, listen, neighbor. Say, the preacher may not touch you and say, he don't have to. Tell him God is here. And tell him God is about to give you a release. I dare you if you believe that. Because heaven's getting ready to meet you where you are. And I don't need you to play with it. If you believe that, open your hands and lift your hands and give God a shout. And don't pull your hands down until you feel a breakthrough. Hit you right where you are. Churches are shifting. Marriages are shifting. Homes are shifting. Money is shifting. Your mind is shifting. I hear God say, I'm drying up suicide. I'm drying up suicide. I'm drying up suicide. I'm drying it up. The devil is alive. Oh, shut up, the devil is a liar. I'm trying it up. I'm trying it up. I'm trying it up. I'm trying it up. I'm trying. You can't die. You're my shot. I rebuke sickness. I rebuke premature death. You're the best. Run the best. Hold on. Come forth, son. Come forth, son. Come forth, son. Quit running, son. Quit running, son. Quit running, son. Quit running, son. Quit running. Hondo. Ilamansa. Hold on. God says, I'm sure, but you got to be sure. Hondo Mohosha. Hondo. Lord, I feel Jesus. Hondo Mohosha. Hondo The glory is here. The anointing is here. Lift your hands, baby girl. Woosha. Hold on. Hold on. Hold In the belly. In the belly. In the belly. In the belly. Hondo Mohosha. Oh, I feel God. Yando no 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 say. Brika tana maha. Broko tana maha. Yina na mando. Hana mi ase. Hope. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. I feel the glory back here. I feel the glory. 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 Oh, come on, church. The hand of God. In this room, your man said, Ilamanda Baha. Oh, 
There it is. Hey, 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 hey. He said, I'm stirring you. 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 My God, the breakthrough is here. I'm stirring you. Revival's back here. I'm there. Everybody back here. Open your mouth. Oh, there it is. I felt it. 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 Because he's healing some stuff. Ho, 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 ho. Say, hey, Ro, this is victory, Ro. Now, if they playing, change roles. Change, change, change. You can switch roles. Don't be, the, listen, I ain't, if you offended, oh, well. Now, look down there, Ro, say it again. Say, hey, Ro, this is victory, Ro. Say, God's getting ready to do something on this role that we've been needing him to do. Since August, say, look down your row, say, row. If you don't play with this praise, tell them you're getting ready to experience a breakthrough and a shift like you ain't experienced in a long time. Woo! Lord, I feel glory in here. Now, watch. Some of you may dance, some of you may leap, some of you may run, some of you may scream. But I want to encourage you, whatever you do, God said, do something. And I feel such a weight of glory. I could have almost labored in that whole back of that church because I feel a weight of glory back there. Shadabaha. There's a wave that's getting ready to hit the back of that church. Yodabanda say, Atadabaha. It's going to hit the whole building, but it may almost start back there and then run up here. But I feel God in this place. Look down, yo, you connected with your rope? Say, Ro, something, something big it may happen on this road. I, I can't even tell you all that God's getting ready to do, but something big getting ready to happen on this road. And when I holler Jesus, 
I don't want you to play with it. I want you to go after God with everything you got. Leap until you feel that thing break. Shout until you feel that thing break. Dance until you feel that thing shift. But God says, whatever you do, my God, that's it, Tanya. I like it when y'all start without me. But God said, go get it. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Here it is. Gina!
need y'all to listen to the instruction. Because I just heard the Lord say, some of you all are getting ready to experience rapid seasons change in the right direction. What you gonna get ready to experience? Rapid season change in the right direction. Now y'all can't be lazy because I'm getting ready to challenge you. It's all right. Get you some hand sanitizer. But look at the neighbor next to you and say, neighbor, my dance is gonna start with you, but it ain't gonna end with you. Tell them, because that's what God's getting ready to do in my life. I'm getting ready to start in some places, but I will not end where I started. Praise him, Dayron. Yell that bush. So watch this. You're going to start praising with the neighbor whose hand you're holding right now, which means you're holding somebody's hand. But when I yell switch, you better switch fast, because that switch is a shift. That's getting ready to come to your life. Y'all ready? Don't play. Now watch. We ain't got time for no catches. We ain't got, you got to be your own usher. You got to be your own nurse. Because I heard the Lord say that some of y'all, by the time you get to number three, you're going to be in another place in God. That's all right. We roll in the floor over here. So just roll yourself in a little safe place. Cause there's about to be a breakthrough. You ready? Start dancing with that neighbor right there.
I'm trying to move on, but that clap got power. I hear music. I hear steps are paramount so be careful but God said that he's with you in your neighbors he's with you he'll never leave you nor forsake you
song for this week. That thing ministers to me. Say it again. He's gonna do. I'm moving. But I dare you minister that to someone. Tell him he's gonna do. He's gonna do. He's gonna do it. Anointing 
Can we cover those who need to shout and too afraid because y'all too quiet? I need everybody in that back to open your mouth and shout because there's a breakthrough back there. I keep telling y'all. Yeah. Only fall. Only fall. Only He's turning your heart. He's turning your situation. And I want to challenge those who are going to sow with me a seed of 180 to meet me on this stage. That's $180. I'm sowing it. If you're going to sow that with me, I want you to come. Because God is causing a turn. God is causing a turn. God is causing a turn. God is causing the turn. next group of you, you will sow a seed of 80 because in that turn there's a new beginning I want you to bum rush and get around the altar, there's several of you who need to sow that 80 I didn't know so many were sowing the 180, but there's several of you sowing the 80, I want you to come and just meet me around the altar meet me around the altar oh, oh. Saint Germain. The next level of giving are those who are going to sow the 40. I said, Bishop, I'm sowing 40. If you're sowing 80, just get close to the altar. Amen. Those of you who are sowing 40, I want you to begin to get it. Everybody in this house should find yourself in one of those different levels of giving, 180, 80, and 40. When you get it, stand all over this building. Somebody give me the online church. Give me those online. Oh, those who are sowing 80 at the altar. Thank you, Jesus. Who you got? We got about 700 on YouTube. And we got close to 100 on Facebook. We're dealing with almost over 800 people watching right now. Can we clap our hands for our, for our virtual church? Those who are sewing, I thank you. Online church is already, Bishop, I'm sewing with you. I see. Ashley Lucas, I see. Amen. Jamari. Uh, yeah, bless you. Taylor Ja, I think that's what they say. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I see you. Oh. I see you, Keisha, Keyshawn. Y'all can't see some of these names. I can't read them, so y'all just bear with me. Brandon Langley, I see you. Vaughn on the keys, I see you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I see you, Cynthia Gray. Glory to God. I see you. Amen. I see you. I see you. Amen. Online is on. The rest of us, amen, we're giving a $40 seed, and I want you to stand all over this place. If you don't have 40, get as close to it as you can, but I want to challenge you at the 40 mark. You're standing all over this building, all over this building, all over this building, all over this building. Your closest. Who got my wallet? All right. Give me my phone. I'll sort the cash out. Yes, 
yes God I want you to name on that seed what's turning some of you your hearts are turning your business is turning some of you your marriage is turning your family is turning your job is shifting I want you to name that seed what's shifting Dollar sign NZT Green is on, right? I should know I own Cash App Street. And when you when you got it, I want you to hold your seat up high in the air. He blessed me today. He said, Bishop. This is the word for New Zion Temple. It's flourishing in 2023. That's been our word since the top of the year. It's flourishing in 2023. I know that to be the truth. Hold it high and I want you to declare it is flourishing for me in this season. And I want you to declare, say, Lord, things are turning in the right direction. In the right direction. In the right direction. In the right direction. If you believe that, I want you to open your mouth and give God a shout for the turn that's coming your, your way right now. Come on, don't play with it. Oh, come on, don't play with it. On oh, me. Come on, help me. Oh, begin to sow. Come from all over. Hallelujah, come from all over. Even if you're sowing on your phone. I want to challenge you to approach this altar and wave your wave your phone across the altar in the name of Jesus. On me. Come on, for I need it. food they got PJ chicken a whole lot they got everything bless it and eat it but bless the seed bless the tithe bless the gift bless those who had and those who had not multiplied in Jesus name bless your people Lord I speak testimonies from this seed tonight ah in the name of Jesus I prophesy testimonies right now.
prophesying. I said, I'm waiting on Elder Gary to pull up in his truck. Somebody say, do it quick. Lord, I wish I had a raggedy church that would open up your mouth and shout for somebody else. Somebody say, do it quick. Huh? So you won't have to work for others for a long time. This is just training for what God's getting ready to open for you. This is just training. Learn everything you can. Because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. Everywhere that you go. Shout yeah, yes. Hallelujah. Woo. Lord, I feel glory. I feel that thing on my arms. You're number, I know that sounds crazy, but I feel it. Lord, Lord, Lord. I don't care if you got to start up in the trunk of your car. Start. Y'all ain't talking to me. We all start somewhere. Laugh at them, talk about them. I don't care what you do. Start up in the trunk of your car, the back seat at the passenger seat. Get you a heating cooler and a regular cooler and come get this chicken. You better come up here and get one of these. What is it? A chicken sandwich. Y'all ain't talking. Because if we can support others, we can support our own. Hey, yeah! God's mouth is too big to speak it to one person. If he's going to do it for Elder Gary, he'll do it for you. Your bracelets, your earrings, I don't care what you got. Get it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Oh. Woo. Oh, yeah. oh. I know it's all right. I know it's all right. All right, let's go. If you've never been to Ignite, just how we... I love this church. I swear I love this church. I keep telling y'all I'll join all over again. Let me say this. Let me say this and we're going to go. Y'all, let me say thank you, number one. We have never gotten the response we've been getting with Ignite like we're getting right now. And right now, we are over 140 rooms gone. 140 rooms gone. Y'all pray for me. Uh-oh. All right. Okay. There it is. Thank you. Uh, and so they're really trying to get me to lock in another hotel. Um, this, is the, this is the bad part that I'm afraid of. If registrations are moving this fast in January, our numbers don't start moving like this till June. And it gets faster, 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 faster. We normally average between 380 to 400 registrations. This is the danger. The max I can get in that building is 700. The hotel is projecting that if numbers are getting like that with the rooms, and if you're putting at least two people in each room, you're already at 250 people in the sanctuary or the, where we're going to have the thing, the conference. Y'all need to register because guess what I will have to do then? You know, some people won't register for you to come to the service. And I'm not mad. I really don't get it. I'm just glad you come. But I'm going to have to put my registrants first. 
So if we already around 200 in registration, I know by June we're going to be over 500. I just, if, if the statistics are right. And I'm grateful. I really am. Thank you. Y'all won't, y'all want me to cry. When they called, the hotel called me, I thought they was calling to kick me out. They said, no, sir, you're going to need another hotel because we're getting ready to sell out in your room amount that we're giving you. So I'm trying to make a deal with them to say, won't you just give me the whole hotel? And then they said, well, you're getting a discount on your room. So we may have to get to the hotel next door, and and that's fine. But I want to encourage you, register, 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 so you at least have a guaranteed seat in the building. And when I drop the list of who comes, Oh, it's going to be good. I can't tell you yet. Uh, we haven't had a bad one yet. And I'm going to tell you, but this one's going to be crazy, crazy. This one's going to be good. You coming, Daddy? That's my Daddy. Go on, Daddy. That's right. <laughs> huh? uh, they, they won't let me. they already they already saying, shut your mouth. I want to I wanna announce it right. I want to obey our marketing people who tell us, that, you know, they got me on a schedule. So I'm going to pay my schedule. All right. I always mess up every year. Give me to next Ignite. I'll I mess up a little bit. <laughs> okay. All right. Come on. Come on, Stan. I love you so much, y'all. Lady V turning up tonight. Y'all pray for Lady V. She out with her girls. All right. She, she, it's a holy turn up. Yes. You know, the kids mad at her. Everybody mad at her. She with her girls, one of her girls' birthday tonight. I just want y'all to know what y'all, so y'all don't be making up stuff. Girl, where Lady V? She looked like she had an attitude this morning. She was, <laughs> you know, we come up with stuff. No, she's very happy. She's very happy. Hey, man, she not here because she's, she's, she's having fun tonight. Not, she wasn't going to go. And I told her, you go ahead and have a good time. Hey, man, you're entitled to that. She's a great mama. She's a great wife. She's an amazing first lady. An amazing executive pastor. So she's out tonight, and don't y'all bother. Let her have a good time. I gave her, I gave her, I gave her a, a curfew, though. I said, now, don't make me have to pop up. We can all be having a good girl's time. Hey, it's over. I was like, no, I'm just like, hallelujah. So we love her. Just in case she's watching, can y'all scream for Lady V? We love her. We love her. She ain't watching. <laughs> She Friday night. But if she happened to go back, amen. Father, we love you tonight. I thank you. I thank you for your word. And I thank you for the hard truths that sometimes we don't suffer because we've done anything wrong. Sometimes we suffer because you trust us with it. You trust that we won't curse you. We won't lose our faithfulness towards you. We'll stick in and fight the good fight of faith. Now, Lord, cover us with your blood. As we travel up and down our highway and byway, get to our separate homes and destinations safely. Protect us, keep us, lead us, guide us. And Father, I pray a special prayer of favor for every single person that has walked in this building. That God, you would open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open. And I pray that God, you give favor like never before. We love you for this and we thank you for the victory in this. Bless us and increase us. In the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. All those in agreement say, Amen. Hope somebody.